When I first came back, it was about six years ago. So um, Delhi was a very changed place when I came back. Delhi was crowded. It had a lot of people, a lot of cars, a lot of traffic. It was difficult for me to kind of adjust to it, except for the monuments. The monuments still look beautiful, lovely places to hang out in. But then we get out of those places, and you're back in the city, you're back in the chaos, you're back in the midst of all of this angst that's around you. And you say, how do you deal with it? You know, you go to a nice place, like an art place, and you say, wow, such a lovely marketplace. Now I want to get out of here. Let me just jump into the metro. Not so easy, right? I go there, literally people are jumping on me. This is the reality that Delhi had become, and I figured out I can sit here and idealize about what I want Delhi to be, or maybe what I imagine Delhi to be. Um, it's yesterday's, it's gone. I can't bring it back, so I might as well learn to cope with it. And this idyllic Delhi is not going to happen. This is the real Delhi that I'm going to deal with. This is a change that's happened. It's an irrevocable change. So what do I do? Maybe I should be part of the change. So how do I be part of this change? One of the first ideas that struck me as I was to go into Lodi Gardens was, this is a place where I can think, I can breathe, and I can actually wander around, enjoy nature in Delhi. Right here came the idea, let's just enjoy the space, let the ideas flow. We saw the monuments, there's a lot of history out there, there's a lot of culture out there, you can go enjoy that, you can enjoy the green gardens, the flowers, the fountains, and so on. And of course, oops, there you go running again. And then, then, you can, then you see these garbage cans. The garbage cans look sort of sad, neglected, lying around everywhere, no one's using them. People come there, have the picnics, dump the trash around the garbage cans, and they are still there. Somebody was trying to actually replace them with newer ones. And I wondered why? If no one's using them, how will that make a difference? And then I find out there's an agency that actually deals with this whole thing. And that agency is who I thought, let's go and talk to and get some permissions from to run an experiment. The experiment was very simple. We would take some of these garbage cans and put some artwork on them. We'll make them more interesting, more visually attractive, and hopefully more visible to the people who come to the park. That worked, they give us a go ahead, and with a bunch of volunteers, we started about doing some artwork on these bins. Now the settings lent themselves really well to the whole environment. Of course, it was a beautiful park, and these artists who came there as volunteers didn't mind it, because they were in the midst of these lovely surroundings. And here they were taking inspiration from elements around them and creating lovely artwork on these bins. They were almost getting too up close and personal with these bins, and people were wondering, these are dirty garbage cans. Why are you sitting so close and painting on them? Well, there's a difference. They were creating artwork, and this was their new canvas. This was a space that they had chosen to beautify. It did not matter how dirty it was before, but it mattered what they were going to turn it into. And that's where the difference came about. So we actually started creating street art in the middle of this lavish, beautiful green space called Lodi Gardens with all these artists giving it their best and their creativity to create something which was very unique. It had not been done before in Delhi, and for that matter, probably in most of the cities. The artists got so personal, they wanted to hug their cans, get their photos taken, whether day or night. This guy had to catch a flight to Paris in the middle of the night. He says, I have to go there and take a picture with my bin I just finished. So we had to go there and make sure he got that. Kids got involved, families got involved. People would come and ask for permissions. Excuse me, can I take a photo with that? Excuse me, that's a garbage can. Um, <laughs> you're not in a gallery anymore? Sure, please go ahead. In fact, use it as well. Uh, don't just take photos of it. So the transformation was amazing. Overnight, people were looking at these garbage cans, not as just dirty pieces of objects lying around uselessly. Suddenly, we had an art gallery an art walk, walkway, if you like, right in the middle of the park. And the artworks were absolutely stunning. So we had brought about a change and left, about, left there a lot of um, stunning artworks for people to see and admire for the future. So I said, OK, if this can be done in a park, how about we tackle something different? So the next thing, as, as you just noticed, was we looked at the marketplace. Shankar Market was built in the 1950s. This is a market built probably after Connaught Place, but lately, over the years, it seemed to have got neglected. And while they were still selling all of the clothes, you know, the ready-made garments and the goods, what they used to, the people who were visiting this were no longer the younger shoppers, most like you. How many here have even heard of Shankar Market? 
Apps, fantastic. That's what I'd love to hear now. <laughs> Five years ago, had I asked this question, many of the people would have said, Shankar, what? Where is it? <laughs> right. So it kind of got put on the map, you know, partly because of what we were able to do, what we were able to bring about a change in there. When you looked at the whole layout of the market, this market has seven buildings, which are smaller, and one large building. So seven buildings, hmm, great idea. What if we do some sort of a rainbow theme on this thing and make it more colorful? So we put together a bunch of artists and a lot of different ideas, and we started about it. In less than a few days, you know, we put them up on these scaffoldings. Most of them had never climbed a scaffolding. Most of them didn't even know what a scaffolding was. <laughs> so we got them up there. Of course, we did give them safety gear, as you will see somewhere. Some of them were wearing it. And we told them, here is the idea. Let's spruce up this place, make it so exciting, so colorful, that all of you would love to come back here with your friends to shop. And so they did. And they went up there with the best creative ideas, and they started to turn this place around. Now, as the day went by, there's a safety harness I was talking about. I wasn't lying. Um, so he's, he's holding it. He's not wearing it. Um, <laughs> photo op, right? Um, so then we had, we had these people go up there and start painting it, and soon this market was transforming completely. You know, ideas about retail, about pop art, social media, all kinds of things are coming up. Even Baba's doing their, no, oh, he's running away again, uh, running, doing, doing their artwork. And when they were done, they were sitting up there relaxing, enjoying what they had created. The walls changed so much, the market association head and all the honchos came by and brought in their things saying, this is wonderful, this is wonderful. You, you guys have done a great job. By the way, can we do this? Can we add that color? Can we build something on my shop? Now the ideas were coming. They were turning into art critics, not just admirers. So we said, hang in there. Let us do what we do, and we're going to do some more. So we brought in some musicians, some other friends of ours, and that evening, we called them all together. We had a giant fusion with them, and it was a great, exciting end to this beginning, which we had done at this marketplace right after Lodi Gardens. And now Shankar Market became a mecca of street art. It suddenly got a lot of attention in the media. And over the next couple of months, we even covered, oops, runs again. Uh, we, covered, we covered the whole space in artwork, including the building in the front. And a lot of people still don't notice it, but it's, most of it is still out there. So I encourage you, for those of you who do go shopping and the others who don't, check it out sometimes. It has survived over four years now. Coming back to a school, now, how many people have heard of uh, free school under the bridge? Anyone? Yeah, quite a few. Fantastic. This school was started uh, in 2011 by one Mr. Rajesh, under the metro pillars, very close to Akshardham Temple. Nothing, he had nothing. He had just a wall and he had some floor space. They installed some blackboards, you know, got some, got some kids to come there, and now he has over 200 children studying there every single day. At this school, one thing he lacked was color. So when I went and spoke to him, he was a bit skeptical. He was like, okay, what can you really do to this place? We get gifts, we get books, we get people coming to volunteer their time. We said, we'll give you color, we'll give you creativity. He liked the idea, kids loved it. So we went about the business, we said, okay, fantastic. Let's go and give us a theme which fits with the open environment of learning that the school has. Let's give these kids creative things to think about and of course, involve those kids as well in the process. So right in there, within one day, we also had some volunteers join us from some of the corporates in Gurgaon and other places who wanted to be a part of this thing. They thought it was very exciting. And as you can see, a lot of art got done within a very short period of time. The volunteers were jumping in, and of course, the kids. The kids did not want to let go. They were like, give us something more. We want to fill colors. We want to add colors to this thing. This is our space. And they were feeling not only proud about it, they were totally enjoying it. Um, at the end of the day, this was a transformed space. And of course, we had a lot of happy people at the end of the day. Hopefully, I'll show you that soon. And um, when we were done, like for instance, this was a very interesting experiment with it, mixing up the alphabets, jumbling them up. And we actually have a video of these kids jumping up and down trying to figure out where is C and where is X and where is Y and where is Z. So this, this was going on. Those kids don't look too happy, but they believe me, they are. Um, <laughs> and then, of course, we had the group shots uh, with, with all of us. And at the end of the time, even they themselves were taking pictures of their teachers against this wall. We thought, yes, a change has happened. This change has been brought about by them with a little bit of facilitation from our side. So coming now to one thing which we feel it's an ongoing process of change. You know, we looked at the gardens, we looked at the school, we looked at the marketplace. So we said, okay, let's look at a place which has been neglected. One place that came to mind is something which a lot of you may have driven past. Any of you know what this place is? 
Anyone? J JNU, Vasant Kunj Malls, any idea? That space? You're too far out right now. It's, it's very close to where JNU meets Vasant Vihar intersection, and you go to the malls towards Vasant Kunj. This is a slum that's been around for many years. As you go past, I was wondering, why is this so run down in such a great location? Why can't this look nicer and cleaner? Obviously, the civic authorities had given it a miss and not really paid much attention to it. The news about this was not nice. The news was, oh my god, there's another slum that's growing and growing. It'll never go away. We have something going on over here. It's an underbelly of Delhi, as if there are not many others, but anyway. So I said, that's not true. It can't be all right. There's so many people living here. What is the life that they're leading? And so we go inside, and we start discovering the streets. We start exploring the streets. We spend some time talking to the people over there. We find out not only are they aware of cleanliness, they like color, and they have some pretty interesting lives. Some of them are entrepreneurs. Some of them are teaching kids right inside there. And a lot of kids from there actually put on the uniforms and get into school buses and go to schools. This was a very much a living little township, which we just like to call as a slum. It was hard, hardly a slum in that sense. Now, what they did not have were good homes, or colorful homes for that matter, uh, more than just the basic colors we saw. So we said, let's take up the one area which is relatively clean. By the way, right behind this, I mean, if you can imagine, there's about 50 tons of garbage poured on the street. So we, we were not even trying to hide the fact from that, but we said, let's take this toilet complex and start with that. The girls were curious, the kids wanted to play around and say, okay, let's see what these guys are up to. But then suddenly they got involved. They got so involved, you know, they even, uh, oops, there we go. We've got a jumpy, jumpy, jumping jack flash. Um, kids got involved and they were happy to pose all together in front of the walls that they had just painted. And then, of course, they started calling this pool walon ki diwar. You know, there were giant flowers over here that became a landmark. Of course, till that time, this used to be MCDK garbage wali diwar. And now it became a little bit different from that. Little positive thing. Uh, from there, other walls around that area, so much so the local animals loved posing in front of them. They said, no, oh, this is cool. I like my pictures taken right here. Um, people came in with requests from their homes. Okay, we had a lot of people saying, okay, you beautified the toilet complex, but what about my house? That's so much nicer. We said, yeah, we'll make it a little bit more colorful as well. So we went into the alleys, we were requests from the temple, we had requests from homes, and a lot of other places. Now, Mr. Cooler Man was one of the most popular things with the kids. They couldn't believe how a mundane little cooler had been turned into a piece of art where they could actually you know, relate to, like, oh, that's nice, he's cool too. Uh, every now and then, the owner would take off the cover to add water, and then the kids were like, what happened? Where's the eyes gone? Um, besides that, of course, you know, different motifs were added by the artists. They were given a lot of freedom. You know, they created things like owls and eagles and oh, running off. And of course, pe people painting around there as well. So any of these pictures that you want to see later on, we're happy to show in more detail. Right now, I just get a sense of it. And uh, then, of course, the pictures. Everybody loves to have their pictures taken of the artwork that they have just created. And every single time we went there, there was two things these kids wanted to do. Give me all the colors, give me the rollers or the brushes, even if it means washing them, and then let me paint and take a photo with it. So they wanted to be involved. They wanted to be really, really engaged. This is a moment of pride for them, whether we were drawing mandalas, whether we were doing the walls of the boundary over there. And of course, look at these cute girls. I mean, absolutely, you know, you, your heart goes out to them. Like, and they were there every single day, wanting to know when the paint, painter, un uncle, and aunties are coming. And so this place started getting... We were also now becoming part of their life. Gauri, this goat, had just given birth to five kids the last night, we were told. So we were invited to come there and visit her. So we said, okay, we will. Uh, Gandhi Baba, who's supposed to be 105 years old, also in the, in the same village, we were told, come get his photos too. He kind of has a frown on his face, like, what the hell? You've got a frog behind me. <laughs> Next time you do my portrait, make something nicer. We said, we promise we will. Um, so we had these rainbow walls coming up. Anytime you wander in there, literally there's a surprise around every corner. You know, there are th themes that are picked from the village. There are people, there are animals, there are things that they deal with every day which are being depicted in there. And ultimately, what we get is a lot of smiles, a lot of happiness. And we say, you know, I started feeling Delhi, about Delhi being frustrated, crowded, angry, you know, road rage. Look at this. How can anyone get angry over here? 
These are blessings we're getting by the pictures they're giving us, and these are the blessings we're getting by the love they're showering on us, and we are trying, this is an ongoing process, to completely change the space, next time you drive by you'll notice, over the next few months, into hopefully a street art village of its own, but more importantly, we are part of the change, we decided we'll be the change. Thank you.